Our state has five petroleum refineries capable of producing more than 500,000 barrels per day. Oklahoma is the third largest producer of natural gas in the U.S. and is home to the world's largest oil storage facility. It is an historic and critical part of Oklahoma's overall economy. But will it always be that way? In this week's in-depth discussion, Susan Cadeau visits with industry experts to talk about what is and what may be. Thank you, Rich. Yes, it's all about the energy you put out in Oklahoma. It's known for putting out a lot of energy. And we have some movers and shakers with us today to talk about the latest uh, what, of what's going on in the energy sector. And I'd like to introduce our panel to, to all of you. First, we have Brooke Simmons, who is president of the Petroleum Alliance of Oklahoma. We have Dewey Bartlett Jr., who is the president of Keener Oil and Gas Company. I like that, hi. Hey. And then we have Jerry Bowen, who is editor-in-chief of OK Energy Today. Dot com. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. And we're going to be on a first name basis for this discussion, okay? Perfect. All Perfect. right. Thank you all for being with us. Um, uh, first, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and start with Brooke. Briefly, um, tell our viewers who you are and a little bit about your organization. I am president of the Petroleum Alliance of Oklahoma. We represent 1,300 member companies and there are tens of thousands of employees in the upstream, midstream, and downstream oil and gas industry in Oklahoma. Uh, our job is to advocate on behalf of the oil and gas industry, and that's what we do at the state capitol, at the Corporation Commission, and at the federal level, too. We will be coming back to you for some answers on some questions I have. Um, um, do we tell us a little bit about yourself and your group? Sure. I'm the uh, president of Keener Oil and Gas Company. Uh, we've been, in, I'm the third generation of my family to uh, be involved with our company, located in Tulsa. But I'm also the chairman of the Oklahoma Energy Produce, uh, uh, Producers Alliance. And uh, we're a 550 member organization spread throughout 75 uh, communities, uh, cities, et cetera, in, in, uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, we represent uh, what's, what will be considered to be the small independent oil and natural gas producers in Oklahoma, the legacy companies that have been around for decades that uh, are producing uh, wells day in and day out. All right. And finally, we have, last but not least, Jerry Bone, and a lot of people may recognize that name. Jerry, tell us a little bit about you. I spent about Oh, better part of 50 years in uh, radio news in Kansas and Oklahoma, most of it in Oklahoma City. And then uh, about uh, 10, 11 years ago, I uh, decided uh, to create OK Energy Today, a daily energy newsletter. And currently we have about 5,700 subscribers, most in Oklahoma, but in Texas, Colorado, New Mexico and such. And uh, it's now owned by Funk Companies and I'm the managing editor and uh, so it's a daily newsletter and I scribble a lot, basically. <laughs> okay, it's pretty adept at scribbling uh, yeah. from Jerry Bonin. Um, so my first question, and, and anyone can answer it, is um, I wanna talk about the new administration's, uh, President Biden's policies, which lean towards um, increased regulation uh, when it comes to um, environmental impact. And I see, Brooke, I see you nodding your head, so we'll go to you first. Um, how is that impacting Oklahoma's oil and gas industry or does it have an impact at all? Well, it does have an impact. Uh, I will just say, I believe today the U.S. Senate is going to take up a resolution of disapproval overturning one of the Trump administration policies that actually helped our marginal oil and gas well operators. Uh, it's called Quad OA. These are, it's a basically a strict and duplicative and very expensive uh, methane reduction program that had been in place in the previous administration, Trump backed off of that and said, hey guys, we need to really think about the economics of this. And now the Biden administration with the, the Democrat controlled Senate is going to uh, roll that back. And that's gonna increase costs for small well operators across the state of Oklahoma. I think the estimates are somewhere between four and $6,000 per well. When we talk about methane reduction, what is that? Uh, um and how much of an impact did those measures that are now being overturned or that are now being brought back have on, on the, the, the daily output? And I don't know who wants to, uh, Dewey, since you own an oil company, do you want to tackle that one or Jerry? Well, it's, it's something that is uh, throughout the industry. It's not a, anywhere near as big a deal as many are making it, uh, but it's something that the environmentalists are, are really rallying behind. And it would be a, a terrible, uh, very, uh, uh, destructive uh, result if they do get their way. 
uh, every little bit of uh, gas that's produced uh, does uh, emit a very, very small amount of methane. And it's normally uh, not even enough to start a, any kind of a small engine, for example. Most companies take a, uh, take a good responsible use of it. They uh, either produce it uh, in a pipeline or they flare it in a, in a uh, very uh, positive way. But the environmentalists are seeing it as a, a real holy grail that if, if we can uh, get something done here, uh, we will uh, go down the path that we want, which is to uh, totally dismantle the uh, oil and natural gas industry as we know it in the United States today. It's a very, very uh, worrisome uh, uh, perspective that, that the environmentalists, especially those in Washington, D.C., have right now. Jerry, I think Dewey, Dewey hit it on the head though when he called it the holy grail mm -hmm. of the environmentalists. I mean, they've really latched onto this, haven't they, Dewey and Brooke? Yes. No question. And I will tell you that we see this sort of quasi-religious fervor on the environment. And we, if you have, once you start unpacking what the Green New Deal is and the Biden administration's plans, what they're really talking about is this fantastical pursuit of an elimination of hydrocarbons without any sort of uh, basis in reality about what our industry provides in the way of human progress. And I think Dewey would agree with me. We talk about the security issues associated with that. We're basically talking about the United States offshoring its energy security to Russia, Saudi Arabia, and in great respect, China. And you know, Dewey is a long student of history. If you go to Dewey's office, you can see all these wonderful political cartoons talking about OPEC and the cartel and their impact on US energy policy over time. And for me, uh, and with children, I worry about that a lot. What are we doing? How are we taking care of our own energy security? Do we ever, Jerry, I wanna to come to you on this one. Do we ever, as a human race, get away from using fossil fuel? I mean, you see these electric car you know, commercials and it's supposed to be great, but where does the electricity come from, correct? I mean, do you ever see us ever getting away from that kind of energy? Absolutely not. Uh, I, I don't think the, the American public uh, understands the vital role that uh, oil and gas plays in the production of uh, you know, clothing. And I, th I was fascinated by a story I had a couple of weeks ago about how the RV industry was slowed down because of the shutdown of the refineries in Texas during February because they couldn't produce things like foam hmm. and uh, the same way for car manufacturers. Uh, so it affects so many industries. And in fact, I had a story this morning about how the trucking industry is booming now because of the change of lifestyle brought about by COVID-19 and the pandemic, because we've all gone to home delivery of our goods and products and Amazon, look at the fantastic growth that we've seen there. So now you have a greater need for diesel trucks or trucks at period to haul those goods from warehouses to our homes and stores across the country. So Dewey, what's, what's the, uh, so I'm gonna play devil's advocate. So the reality is that if, if the American energy industry is curtailed, is put in a chokehold, Americans are still going to want that energy, right? And we'll have to get it overseas. There's absolutely no way that, that the uh, United States citizens are gonna lessen their demand for the products that we are very accustomed to right now. Everything from fuels to fertilizer. Uh, can you imagine that if uh, the rabid environmentalists and those in Washington, D.C. That, that, that don't ask a lot of questions, can you imagine if they win the day, what they will do just to the farming industry? The breadbasket of our universe is in the middle of the United States of America, generally speaking, and they rely upon good access to fertilizer. Natural gas is a prime um, uh, a component from which fertilizer is made. If we have, don't have access to fertilizer, what are we going to do? The demand is going to be there. And just as the other, uh, other two have stated, we will go, as a country, we'll go offshore. We'll go outside this country like we did several decades ago to get the, uh, the, the, uh, not only the, the crude oil we need, but also the refined products that we need, gasoline, diesel, et cetera. But it puts those countries in a very advantageous position because then they can begin dictating what we do, what our policies are as a country. They tried that before somewhat successfully from time to time, but they will be even in a better position now because a country like China 
has that ability. And we do not want to be there, but that's where we're going. And the powers that be in Washington, D.C. simply aren't asking those questions. They know what the answer is, but they don't want to hear it because they're very selfish about their power positions, unfortunately. Brooke, Jerry, all of this is coming from the energy sector. What we're hearing right now from you guys, um, you guys just don't really care about the environment as much as you care about um, your profit line. Well, that's, that's that question. is absolutely laughable. Our members are working on innovative technologies that not only help American producers deliver the cleanest hydrocarbon molecule possible, but policies that uh, are put in place. Let me give you an example of New York. New York has said no pipelines to the Marcellus Shale, no pipeline, uh, no, uh, no, no infrastructure, no fracking, no nothing like that. But we're going to import dirtier Russian LNG molecules into New York to power New York and keep the lights on and the heat on there. It makes absolutely no sense. But I will tell you what, the engineers, the geologists, the hardworking creative minds in the oil and gas industry are going to be the ones that solve both our energy and our environmental challenges. It's not going to be the scribblers in Washington, D.C., the unelected bureaucrats or the, the sort of the gas bags, the wind bags in Congress who talk about this. It's going to be folks like Dewey's employees and our members companies employees that are actually going to solve these issues. I want to talk about prices of gas just for me, just for consumers, a lot higher than they were last year. Who can answer why? The demand is up for one thing. From where we've uh, been the last year or so, uh, actually a, year, uh, a little more than a year, uh, the demand for uh, crude oil and natural gas has it, it plummeted, both for gasoline, uh, diesel fuel to a lesser extent, but jet fuel uh, incredibly uh, uh, lost a, a tremendous amount of demand. Now it's changing. Now we're going back to demand is increasing. But there's also been things like the Keystone Pipeline that, that really are uh, a, a, a barometer of what the Biden administration is pursuing, unfortunately. When the uh, first day in office, when Biden uh, said he was going to shut down the Keystone Pipeline, 11,000 people immediately lost their jobs throughout the midsection of the country. Price of, uh, price of crude oil went up because the market has seen uh, the demand increase, but the supply is not increasing other than those points that are offshore. In mm -hmm. other words, the OPEC countries, the Venezuelans, the Russians of the world. So right. we've, we've seen prices uh, uh, increase. It's, it's very uh, demand oriented. Demand's not going away, but the supply is going to be changing unless we do see a change of administration in the next two and four years, uh, in my opinion. Brooke, how big of a blow was the loss of the Keystone pipeline to Oklahoma? Did that impact Oklahoma at all or not? It did impact Oklahoma. In addition to the supply and demand uh, balance questions that are sort of forward looking, you're talking about 50 jobs in Oklahoma, $10 million in contracts uh, for both services and construction in Cole County, a $17 million pump station in Oklahoma did not get built because of uh, the Biden administration decision on Keystone XL. And I wanna point out, we hear a lot of talk about infrastructure coming out of Washington, DC. Well, as everybody on this call knows, pipelines are infrastructure. And it makes absolutely no sense to uh, choose one type of infrastructure that provides the, the life-saving hydrocarbons versus some other kind. It's, it's nonsensical what we see out of the Biden administration right now. You know, it's also a national security issue because that pipeline was primarily going to be bringing oil from Canada, our probably most uh, uh, renowned ally, mm -hmm. uh, into the United States, down to Cushing, Oklahoma, to be distributed elsewhere. If yeah. we have a problem, if we ever have a problem of, of supply of crude oil, wouldn't we rather be able to rely upon somebody like Canada, our friends, as opposed to going elsewhere for, 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 to, to uh, uh, help a supply, pro a supply problem we might have? It was a real, real boneheaded idea. And to do that against one of our good friends, it was just outrageous. Listen, gentlemen, our, our time is wrapping up. I do want to get a last word from each one of you. Um, what you think Oklahomans need to know. And, and I would really like to address the fact that um, uh, the, the oil industry 
and you know, are you anti-environment? Are you, do you look for solutions without something being, yeah, being prodded to do so by government or, or instances of environmental um, issues? And, and Brooke, I'll start with you. Look, it just makes sense for our companies to want to deliver the cleanest hydrocarbon molecule possible. That is a efficiency is a, a, an important business consideration. And it doesn't matter whether you're a small company or a big company, you're gonna to wanna to try to deliver that cleanest hydrocarbon molecule to the consumer as possible. I wanna point out that just a, a year ago, oil prices fell to negative $37.63. Today, a year and seven days or eight days later, we are over $64 per barrel. And that is a fantastic signal for Oklahoma. The jobs are going to come back. The economy is going to improve. And I would just like to leave viewers with that sort of mindset that things are getting better in Oklahoma and Oklahoma will continue to be an important part of the United States energy framework. Jerry, final thoughts? Same thing. Uh, it, you know, it's all part and parcel of uh, the Oklahoma economy, uh, just as agriculture is. And uh, I think all the industries take heart in, in knowing that the environment is important to us. And uh, I, I think it's far more important to the industry than the American public has been led to believe. And Dewey, you get to have the last word. <laughs> well, I think that, uh, uh, first of all, I appreciate all of us getting together to talk about the concept of energy. Who better to understand the concept of energy that are people that are very involved in the oil and natural gas industry in Oklahoma? Uh, it's why about 15 years ago, I put 20 solar panels on the roof of our building. First time a commercial installation like that had been done in Oklahoma because I wanted to find out what it's like to produce electricity energy uh, in, in a solar environment. Found out that it's a long-term payout. When we look at, at states like Texas and uh, New York State and California, the problems that they've had when they make decisions based upon energy creation, but not looking at the, what are the unintended consequences, not asking those questions. Well, we have seen in these three states very directly what happens when those questions are not asked and they're not answered. We in Oklahoma need to continue to ask those questions. If we are going to change our mix of energy creation, what are we, what's the consequences? We think that it's a very positive future for us. Uh, the oil and natural gas industry is producing everything that this economy and this way of life needs in order to exist uh, properly. And we've got to be part of that mix and part, part, of, the, part of, the, of that group making those decisions and not just be uh, uh, on the target for uh, every uh, ill-intentioned uh, politician that's trying to put us out of business. Gentlemen, what a great discussion. And I do want to have you back uh, because I know there is so much more that we can talk about and educate ourselves about, about this industry that is so vital to the state of Oklahoma and to the nation. Thank all of you for joining us. Thank you, Susan. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you.